Hi, this is Robin Bremer, and I'm really glad you're here today. Uh, today I want to share with you uh, 2 Corinthians and 6, and also some things on 7. But first of all, I want to remind you to subscribe wherever the, the button is to subscribe, and also to my cat says hello. Say hello, Chloe. She's mad. She doesn't like, oh, oh she's going to fight me. <laughs> He's mean. <laughs> Go out, Chloe. Um, subscribe and um, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry that you had to see my cat being mean. I don't know why she's like that. Anyway, um, subscribe or Facebook friend me or like me, whatever. Go to my website, robinbremer.net and check it out. And today I want to share with you that you are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit is in you. And I'm just so, so excited about the things of God, about walking in the supernatural presence and power of God and carrying the presence of the Holy Spirit in you wherever you go so that you can change the atmosphere. And there's just so much. My head is going because I have so much I want to share with you. But I'm going to share some on this video and then I'm going to do another video where I'm going to go much deeper into the things of God that I'm going to share with my Viper people. And those are the, the my subscribers that are really hungry for the things of God. They pay $10 a month. And I give them uh, a much deeper content because I know not everybody wants to walk in the supernatural. Not everybody is hungry for God. Not everybody wants to take the Holy Spirit into their presence. Not everybody wants to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Some people just want to just, I don't know. Anyway, um, the, the group, the Vipers, uh, VIPs, Vipers I call them, are actually, God told me to call them the Circle of Fire, are the people who pay $10 a month for a subscription on membership on my site, which get much deeper content, and it's all about walking in the supernatural, having a relationship, an adventure with the Holy Spirit, and it's so exciting. So, you can check that out on my website. So, today, what I want to share with you is that we want to carry God's presence with us without any kind of uh, borders or fences or hindrances. We want to walk in God's supernatural presence and power. And God showed me this morning that uh, I was to share with you this, 2 Corinthians 5.13. Let me read it a little bit from the Bible here. Uh, okay. Um, okay. So basically it's talking about um, when Solomon was dedicating, when the, the temple was finished, Solomon was finished building the temple with all the gold and the silver and all the precious gemstones and all the awesome, the best wood and the best fabric and in, in blues and purples and scarlet thread. Um, then they dedicated the temple and what they did, they did sacrifices and everything. But what he did was he had the trumpeters, the singers and everybody singing and what he had them doing was praising and thanking God. And he says, that's the keys key when you praise and thank God it moves heaven and that is so exciting uh, so if you go to 13 it says and indeed it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanksgiving to the Lord and when they lifted up their voices and the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music praising the Lord saying for he is good he's good his mercy endures forever that the house of the that the house the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priest could not continue to minister because the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house. The cloud is the glory. And then if you go that second Corinthians, I mean Second Chronicles uh, five thirteen down to the end of that chapter. And then in chapter six, I mean chapter seven, one, it says when Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory filled the temple. And the priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory had filled the house of the, the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw that fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed their face to the ground and prayed, worshiping God and saying. Now, two things I want to remind you of. Number one is when we praise and worship God, Heaven, or, heaven invades earth. Okay, and the other thing is, uh, we are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. And when we praise and worship God, we change the atmosphere. We are atmosphere shifters. 
we change the atmosphere with praise, worship, and thanksgiving. And that's why it's so important when you go to church that if you feel so excited about God and so in love with God that you dance or and raise your hands or you clap or you cheer or you scream or you run, that you do it. That you dance with flags or banners or uh, whatever, play an instrument, that you do it because you're called to it. Because when you do those things, you are bringing the atmosphere of heaven to invade earth. Now, here's something very important, and a lot of people are not going to like this, but the more I hear God talk about this and other people talk about this, the more I come to the realization that we are not getting ruptured getting ready to be raptured. A lot of Christians think that the rapture is right around the corner in the next year or two or three, but I don't believe that. I believe that we are a light and light shines in a dark place. And I don't believe that God is a quitter. And if God would take his people out of the earth in the condition that we are in right now, then it would look as though Satan was the winner. The kingdom of darkness is the winner. Because the church right now is hiding. They're in fear. They want to get raptured out of here. They're scared. They're Okay, this is where we should be walking. We should be having an adventure every day with heaven. We should be experiencing angels being transported. We should have gold and silver dust. We should have gemstones. We should see angels. We should experience angels. Uh, we, of course, we don't worship them. Don't get freaked out about that. We should be um, uh, uh, spiritually, the Lord should... We'll, we, if we allow him, would be taking us to heaven. We are seated in heavenly places. And my cat is back, by the way. Hopefully she's in a nicer mood than she was a while ago. But we should be having a daily adventure with God. And you know what? The more we experience heaven, the more we experience the Holy Spirit, the less we're going to want to sin. We're going to be walking more and more in grace because we're going to know that we're not going to go to hell because we mess up and because we sin. The only per reason that a person goes to hell is because they haven't received the free gift of salvation. And they're not going to miss the rapture and they're not going to go to hell if they sin and mess up. They're just going to maybe go a whole lot sooner to heaven because sin has consequences. And basically it comes down to this. When you're so in love with Jesus, when you just have a relationship with, with him, just like with your spouse, you're not going to want to do anything to hurt their feelings. You're not going to want to sin. You're not going to want to draw away from them or do anything that makes you feel guilty and not want to come near them and appreciate them and love them because you feel guilty. And that's what it's all about, that supernatural adventure, that relationship with God. He is so much fun. He is so awesome and, and so good. And you are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we are not going to get raptured out of here till we are the successful kingdom of God on earth carrying peace, joy, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and until we know that we are the righteousness of God, until we set things right on this earth. And there's my kitty cat. So, unpack the bags. Don't expect to get raptured out of here. What I recommend you do is shut off the TV, throw it out the window, <laughs> shut off the radio, shut off the magazines, because everything that you hear or see or say changes your atmosphere and draws it to you. The Word of God says that be careful what you hear because you will hear more of it. Okay, so if you're listening to TV, you can have what TV has. You can have all the symptoms and sicknesses of the flu and everything else that's going around in the world. You're going to have all the fear that they have. And you were not created like that. You were created to change the atmosphere. You were created to walk in power authority and dominion. It is the kingdom time. It is the time for the kids of God to stand up, to walk, <laughs> to walk in the supernatural presence and power of God, not to wimp out and be afraid. I tell you, times are going to get much, 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 much worse before we get raptured because we have to stand up and take back the kingdom of darkness and transfer it into the kingdom of light. Sickness has to become health. Poverty has to become wealth. <laughs> uh, fear has to become peace. We have to experience a supernatural relationship with the Holy Spirit. 
Yes, it is all by faith, but you are not married by faith. You do not have a relationship by faith. You experience your husband. He touches you. You make love to him. You, you talk to each other. You share life with each other. And that is what life is meant to be like with the Holy Spirit. It is a relationship. It is an experience. It is an adventure. And this is what Christians have to get through their head. They have to get through their head that the Holy Spirit, the New Covenant, is being led by the Holy Spirit. The Old Covenant is being um, uh, ruled by the Law. Okay, so the New Covenant, in the Old Covenant, you were dead. And you were ruled and tutored by the Law. The New Covenant, you are led by the Holy Spirit and blessed uh, by the promises of Abraham. And Jesus died to give you blessings, the blessings of Abraham. And that means riches, wealth, and prosperity. It takes money to preach the gospel. Do you know that I am a clown ventriloquist and I use my ministry to go into places and bring God's presence, get people healed, and set free? Now, my puppets cost $400 each and it costs me money to do my ministry. So, there, I have books published and I promote my books and it costs money to do those things so I am not going to feel guilty for receiving donations for uh, believing God for money I am not going to feel guilty for becoming more and more rich and prosperous because that's how my daddy wants me to be and it costs money to preach this gospel it costs me a thousand dollars to go to the ventriloquist convention to make my skills more excellent more professional and better than the world's than it does uh, just as much as it does for a business leader to go to a convention to learn to make their skills better and I need money to do that it costs money to preach the gospel so don't you feel bad about charging money for your ministry and I am all over in rabbit trails but I'm just leading going where the Holy Spirit is going and for years, I charged $65 for a clown show. And for 20 years, I did a lot of shows for free. I even did some churches. I said, however the Holy Spirit leads you. I had one church that didn't give me a penny. I said, I know the Holy Spirit didn't lead you not to give me a penny. And I talked to a famous, um, t uh, I can't remember his name now, but he has he's sort of country western. He's a Christian country western singer. And he had some songs uh, on the number one chart for years and years, and he still has some now. His name is last name is Decker, Tom Decker, I think his name is. Anyway, he came over to my house because he was building my neighbor's house, and we talked. And he told me, he convinced me to raise my prices uh, for my ventriloquism and my clowning, and my base fee is a hundred dollars an hour is what I basically charge for shows. Um, and gas and so forth and he finally convinced me that if I was doing something for the world and they had the skill level I had that they would be charging a much higher price than I was charging and that I was basically the Holy Spirit said I was conned into religious thinking into thinking um, that I had to give away my services that if I didn't give it away I wasn't being a good Christian but the Lord showed me that he gives me creative and witty inventions on how to use the gifts and callings that I have and that I am to charge money for them so that I bring that money into the kingdom and I can take that kingdom money and I can sew it back into my ministry to bring to make my ministry a ministry of excellence right now I need a new sound system I need a moose puppet from Excel I need the mic I have a board here my dream board I need their sound system I need a new sound system I definitely need a new sound system I want the Axel expression one and I think that's about four hundred dollars and I need a drawing board so I need one two three four I need five different things right now and the price of those five different things equal up to a thousand dollars I pay monthly bills of uh, four hundred dollars a month on my car to have my car that costs money and I have to drive that car it's a it's a 19 uh, a 2030 a 2030 a 2013 and I have to take that car and drive that car to um, like tomorrow I have to go to Oklahoma City and do two shows and on the first I have to drive all the way to Fort Worth which is four hours in both directions um, and do a showcase for Fort Worth, Fort Worth Dallas uh, showcase and so I need my car and it costs money to get the gospel out of there out 
So I am not afraid to charge for my books, my MP3s, my MP4s. And when you donate to my ministry or you buy something from me, that goes right back into the ministry. You're sowing into the ministry. And your business and your ministry should be the same thing. And God has recently been dealing with me about my Viper people. He says he wants me to show business people, which this actually video is going to go toward my Vipers because I'm just getting so deep in this. Uh, but he wants you who are in businesses, whether it's ventriloquism, magician, clown, balloon artist, banquets, uh, uh, singer, worshiper, worship leader, dancer, uh, business leader, uh, uh, at-home mom that works a business through the internet. He wants me to show you through my Viper, uh, through the ring of fire, my Viper people that are monthly subscriptions like you are, Excuse me. He wants me to show you how to take your business and put the supernatural things of God in. And let me show you exactly what I mean. For years, I've been a clown for 22 years. For 20 of those years, I clowned and I interwoven the word and gave the gospel a message. And also taught a little bit about the armor of God and the supernaturalness of God. But, but in the last maybe four years God has told me to do something and for two years I've been disobedient and for the last two years I've been getting the guts up and I've been, done it a few times now I can do it because it's natural and it's easy but what he told me to do is I am not like a regular clown I am not at all like a regular ventriloquist and neither should you be what I do is when I start my show my whole goal of my show is to bring God's supernatural presence and power to that place that I'm going and how I do that is uh, part of the routine. I'm not going to give away what I say because I don't want you to steal it. It's mine. <laughs> but um, what I say is uh, I have good news. And the good news is uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and, to, uh, and forever. He still does signs, wonders, and miracles, and I can prove it. And then I go into the audience, which is really was, was the most scariest part of all. And I... Uh, would pick somebody and I'd ask them if they were in pain or if they had back problems or whatever and then I would heal them. Well God recently showed me that 90% of the, 85 to 90% of the people in the United States have back problems and I've grown out legs. The way to solve back problems is your, what's happening basically is your, your back is out of alignment or either your hips are or your, your um, neck is and it's not on straight. So he taught me um, how to grow out legs and arms which is really just God is just supernaturally adjusting their legs and their arms and it looks like they're growing out and they call it growing out to heal their body supernaturally of TMJ of um, any kind of back problems a lot of bed wetting comes from the legs not being aligned correctly and just different stuff to grow out legs and arms. So I go into the audience as a clown, as a ventriloquist, as part of the show, and get somebody healed. And that, and they actually can see the legs grow out. I have a couple videos of legs growing out on my, on uh, my YouTube account, which is uh, Robin Bremer. Uh, it's either Robin Bremer or Feed My People Joy. I think I don't know which one it is. Um, but uh, I have a couple videos doing that. And see, that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to spend time seeking him, asking him how to bring his supernatural presence into your business place, into the marketplace, into your ministry. Because he doesn't want you to be a religious ministry. He doesn't want you to just go around and sing a gospel song and go home and live a rotten life. It, he wants you to take his supernatural presence into the places that you go and to bring his presence, allow his presence to be without borders and to change people's lives. because. In this end time, in the kingdom of God, we are the ones that change the world. We are the ones, uh, through knowing who we are in Christ and the power that is inside of us, and that this is our assignment to bring God's supernatural presence into whatever place we are to change the atmosphere, to shift the atmosphere to the kingdom of light. And we're always giving life. And so he wants me... For you vipers, for you um, the ring of fire, the inner circle, the ones that are on my membership here, he wants me to teach you how to do what I do, how to take your business or your ministry 
into the marketplace supernaturally. And that's basically uh, what my ministry is about. I don't just want to teach hungry Christians how to, how to do this, but I want to teach hungry Christians to take it into their ministry and into their business, into their homes, and change the atmosphere so that, that you are bringing a super natural presence of God everywhere you go. You're just releasing His presence. That you see people healed, set free. You see arms and legs grow out. You see or um, somebody was blind, they'll be healed. And whether they're deaf, they'll be... Uh, see, even raising the dead, I tried to raise the dead seven times so far. I only actually got to touch three dead people. And I kind of had to do it sneaky, you know, because I was in a funeral home. And, um, you know, I don't want to stir up a bunch of stuff. So I kind of had to do it undercover. But... Um, and one actually I showed up at their home, but they were um, mourning because he had just died. The ambulance was still there. The ambulance people were freaking out. And so all I could do was comfort the, the adult children. And I couldn't really go in. And I, didn't, she, I couldn't really stand around and wait till all the family members that were there were done screaming and mourning and crying um, to go in and to try to raise them from the dead because I just felt as though I needed to back off of that situation. But, I've, you know, it's in my, in my books that I've published, I talk about that. But this is what we're to do in the marketplace. This is how we're supposed to live. This is how we're supposed to stand up, walk in authority, and walk in power. And, and, and the key is, God said to tell you, that you are not here by accident, no matter how you came to be born, whether it was by rape, um, by um, an unwanted pregnancy, or attempted abortion, or whatever. How, however you came into being, into this world, born into this world, you were not an accident. You were created to live in this time because you are empowered with the gifts that you need to be empowered with in order to shift the atmosphere, in order to pull down strongholds and principalities and powers in the marketplace, in the business, and in ministry and undercover. You have been empowered and have the tools to change the world. Now, we are not going to be taken out of here as a wimpy church that we are right now. Most churches are not even teaching about God's grace and God's love. They're teaching about judgment. You sin, come to the altar, repent, or you're going to go to hell. That's not God's way. God is life and God is love. You accept the gift of salvation, Jesus, and you are saved. You are adopted forever. You have security of knowing you're adopted. Then you fall in love with Jesus so much so that you don't even want to sin. Okay? Right believing brings right behavior. Okay? So... And a lot of churches today, all their damnation, 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 they're trying to put fear into people in order to get them to stop sinning. Well, you reap what you sow. The more you pound in fear and the Ten Commandments, the more condemnation, guilt, and shame the person is going to be. But it's not going to empower them to change. What empowers them to change is to know that they are loved, that they are valuable, and they are special no matter what they do. Once they receive Jesus, they are a child of God forever. And they will fall in love with Jesus, and they will not want to sin. Their behavior will change. Addictions will fall off of them. The people that you see in church that have addictions, the same problems over and over and over and over again, are the people that go to a church that does not preach about God's awesome grace, God's awesome love, and how God supernaturally wants you empowered. So therefore, they are just they are going to be religious. They're going to sit there. They're going to say, nah. They're going to be naysayers no matter what you do. You bring in the supernatural presence and power of God. They're going to be religious. They're not going to be pulled out of bondage. Uh, you, you can't be pulled out of bondage with the law. You can only be pulled out of bondage when you know that you're valuable, you're loved, and you're on your way to heaven. That your behavior is not what makes God love you. Makes God love you. You're in Christ Jesus. And He sees you through the sunglasses of the blood of Jesus and what He did for you. So... Um, I guess I'll probably just put this on on the regular video for everybody to see and uh, maybe some will sign up in the Viper. I'll do a little, little video that goes a lot deeper into uh, some of the scriptures on these things that I'll, I'll post later on today. So I'm going to go ahead and share this video with everybody and then I'll make one that goes into a bunch of scriptures 
about you carrying the presence and the power of God. And I'll get in a little bit deeper and I'll share that with my um, circle of fire, Viper people. So I hope you join my circle of fire because we are going to have some adventures in God and it's going to get exciting. You're not going to want to be raptured because you're going to have so much fun on the earth. So my name is Robin Bremer. Remember to subscribe wherever the button is um, and like me on Facebook. I have uh, like me on Rob, uh, the Kingdom Living with Robin Bremer or with my group Experience the Bible and uh, also on Feed My People Joy uh, on Facebook and on YouTube on uh, Twitter and YouTube I got uh, my videos so I will talk to you next week you have a blessed day <laughs>